How's it going fam? Welcome back to Erica's EDC and today we're doing a pocket dump, a channel update, a life update. I have a ton of stuff to share with you guys. Um, some new gear, some new stuff that came in, but oh have I been busy guys. Holy smokes. Um, if you didn't catch the news, I am doing leather work now. What the heck, right? Who knew? Um, yeah. I'm doing leather work. How did I start this? I, I don't even know. Um, life has been kind of crazy. I quit my day job. I was there for like two years and I had just had enough. <laughs> I had just had enough, man. Um, they gave me a raise that would have really changed my life, like a very significant raise. But of course, the other side of it was I would have to do things that morally didn't align with me. And I would have to, I, my coworkers didn't all get one either. And that made me uncomfortable. And I was just fighting for a little more equality in the workplace. And when it didn't sound like it was gonna happen, I was like, forget it, I'm not doing this anymore. So I, so I walked out, <laughs> I walked out. Um, and jumped into leather work full time on a whim. Horrible idea probably, but we'll see what happens. Um, I've been mentioning that I wanted to get into the knife community as a career forever, right? And I don't have room or resources or money to just dive into knife making. So I was like, well, I might as well start leather. That's a good start. Learn how to do a lot of this stuff, kind of get integrated into the community. So. I just randomly kind of like got all the stuff to do leather work and gave it a shot. I'm gonna show you my first slip, don't make fun of me. Um, but this is the first one that I made. And obviously, you know, it's not perfect. Like there are clearly some mess ups and stuff. And this was just cheap leather from uh, Michael's craft store. But I kind of practiced on this and I was like, okay, well, I feel like it has some potential for the first time. I mean, it's not, the most horrific thing so i was like okay well let's see if we can actually do this so then uh i just kind of jumped right into working with like the expensive stuff because i felt like it would force me to do better because i don't want to waste it so then i made this and this is called the carrot and it's literally just carrot orange wicked and craig leather um so this one's been in my pocket since i made it now this one looks really janky because I did not have the groove tool, the groover, to make the line to put the stitching into because basically on the first day that I got it, I dropped it and smashed it and broke it. Uh, but instead of just like being stagnant and not practicing, I was like, okay, well, I can put one together for myself. And although it won't have the groove line, I can see how my products hold up. So this has been in my pocket for about a week. 12 hours a day in my sweaty pocket. There's no AC in this garage, so it's like generally 95 degrees in here. Uh, but this has been in my pocket all day, every day since I made it. And this thing has been completely bomb proof. I mean, it's dingy and gross obviously because it's been in my pocket, but not a single stitch has come out. Uh, nothing has come undone. Like where I burnt the ends off is still exactly the same. Um, and it's holding up incredibly well. Obviously not the most pretty thing because like I said, I didn't have anywhere to put that stitching. So I just had to like eyeball it, but it's, it's been holding up really, really well. So I ended up making more, um, and they fit, you know, medium sized, uh, traditional knives or Swiss army knives. This is a GEC Cody Scout. That's what I've had riding in here. But um, yeah, I mean, people wanted them, people were interested. So I was like, well, I guess I'll make more. So I made a whole bunch of carrots and blew through the whole panel of leather. Like instantly I have two more on the way. I went through two panels of leather actually, and I have two more on the way. Um, and now we're at the point where they're looking pretty decent. So this one I literally just finished up. And this is what they're looking like now with all the appropriate tools and stuff. So I have a new groover that I bought. I was able to make the line to lay the stitching into. I also got a little New Hampshire stamp. So 
all of the carrots are New Hampshire grown in my garage. Um, so yeah, oh, there it goes. <laughs> Doing leather work. Not sure how long this is gonna last. It, who knows what's gonna happen with this, right? But I just had to take a break from like mundane life and do something creative for a little while so we'll see but these little carrots are doing awesome so far obviously if you want one hit me up on instagram i'm making tons but uh they're they're really cool um they're done with one millimeter waxed ritza tiger thread they're also cemented um it's 4.5 to 5 ounce wicked and craig leather it's a nice thick stuff yeah, uh, really enjoying doing it so far. We'll see how it goes. Um, what else? I'll show you guys a couple of things that have come in lately that I haven't shown you yet. So this was a beautiful gift from my friend Josh at Knife Guy Mods. And he put this together for me without me even knowing. And it had multiple makers integrated into the process, which I, lo which I love. So. The knife is by Dirk Hinkerton, and this is a uh, mini Razorback Bowie in 3V. So Josh had this made for me, and it fits my hand perfectly. Sorry, it's a little dirty. Absolutely perfectly, super slicey. It's like 10 thou BTE, razor sharp, beautiful, beautiful knife. And then he had Dirk put the Blue Jane Micarta scales on, that we had used on sod busters back in the day. So that was like a really heartfelt touch white liner there. Um, absolutely beautiful piece. And then he also had Richter make a leather belt sheath for it. So it rides in here, but just a beautiful piece that had a number of people in the process, which I really love. So that's a new piece that has come in. Um, a couple weeks ago, I got these two slips from Dog on John, another fantastic leather worker. These are in Pueblo, I think. I think this one at least is Pueblo, but um, it's two beautiful slips. He's in Wyoming and he does really nice leather work as well. So I got these two in. Great friend of mine. I actually just sent him a carrot, but these are beautiful. Check out his work. He does those stump slips that look like a a tree stump. These don't have the tooling for that, but I have one of those upstairs. It's awesome. Uh, what else have we been up to? We did the SE sharpening the other day on camera. Got this little razor blade going. So I'll do some testing with this, but that sharpened up really, really nicely. Beautiful edge on that. Razor sharp. Did that together on camera. Um, the review for the Slater is coming up, hopefully this weekend, guys. I am finishing up testing of this. This is the Slater by Dusty at Duckhead Forge. And this is in K390, fully custom done at 64.5 HRC. I've been using this all day, every day. And this is doing so incredibly well. It's still sharp and I'm, I'm talking all day, every day. The good thing about this career shift, however long it lasts, is that now I'm kind of back to my roots. A lot of my career has been um, blue collar stuff, whether it be landscaping or working on a farm or working in a warehouse or doing mechanics, um, leather work in a garage, using tools, using your brain, using your hands, that's my type of jam. Um, so the good news is I get to test my stuff way harder, just like I used to back in the day when we first started the channel. So I've been using this literally all day, every day, uh, doing leather work. You cut a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot. I constantly have packages coming in of leather and thread and all types of stuff. Um, I use these cutting mats, which I'll probably lower you guys down and kind of show you my setup. But, um, and this thing is still sharp. Haven't even sharpened it once and I've been using it all month got some really good patina on there but dusty does amazing work and i can't even believe that he's only charging 295 dollars shipped with a usa made sheath which is on my belt um 295 shipped 
leather sheath made in the USA, custom done K390, little EDC knife, six and a half inches, super slicey, 10 thou BTE. How he's doing it, I don't know, but he is, and they're amazing. This one is gorgeous. This one is obviously in my colors, but he's doing a batch of vintage yellow micarta ones that are blasted and those will be available. Go check out his Instagram page. I'll link him down below, but this is just one of the best knives I've ever used. It, it really is. It's the perfect size. It's a great little slicer. I am obsessed with this thing. I can't wait to do the review on it, but I've been getting a ton of use in with it. The other thing I've been using a lot are the Nipex. These, I'm not kidding. This is like my, my hand now because, um, let me lower you guys down so I can explain what I'm talking about. Doing leather work, especially in a hot, sweaty garage, uh, it's not the easiest thing on your hands. And because I've broken both of my thumbs, these two fingers, my grip sucks. It just fucking sucks. Uh, I don't know if the camera will pick that up, but... I also had a dog tooth go through this finger and come out the other end. So this one is in constant pain. I don't know if you can see that little scar right there. That was from that accident I told you guys about. But um, the whole point is my grip sucks. So I can't grip the sewing needles and pull them through the, the holes here. I have to use Nipex. So I'm not kidding. I use this pair of pliers all day all day long. This is, this is my hand now. I did wrap the top part in medical tape because it started leaving while well, I have like a callus starting right here, which you can see. Um, but when I'm holding it like this for more than half the day, it just, that knurling did not really feel that great after multiple hours. So it has the medical tape on it now and it feels much better, but those are used genuinely all day long both of these are these i use all day long non-stop uh so those have been in the pocket um like i said my traditional knife is riding in the prototype of the carrot this is doing awesome always have a flashlight phoenix e12 the reason i'm carrying this one is because i'm gonna have to I'm probably it's probably gonna be toasted once I'm done with it. The reason being is this battery in here won't come out. I don't know what's wrong with it, but it's stuck in there. I think that was one of the problems with this model and that's why they've upgraded it twice now. And yes, I have the upgrades, but I'm just, I'm basically using this until the battery runs out on it. And then I'm just gonna chuck it because I can't get that battery out. But surprisingly, it still works. So I'll chuck that once the battery runs out because I can't put a new one in. Super Tinker still in the pocket. Can't get this out. I don't even bother changing this anymore. I've carried this for years. This is just the best Swiss Army knife for me. I have a, I actually have a video on this duo on my channel somewhere and it's got like 30,000 views or something. No idea why, but you can do just about anything with that duo there. Um, the Nipex, they have been riding in this Lynch Northwest and Redeemed Creations collab slip that I've had for eons. I'm going to make a carrot slip for the Nipex though. It's probably going to be pretty similar to the size and such of this because I mean you don't really need much more than that. So once my new panels of leather come in probably on Monday in the orange, I'm going to make, I'm going to start making um, carrots that fit the Nipex. I'm not sure what it will be shaped like, but it'll probably be shaped like the Nipex just to cut down like real estate in your pocket. But until that gets there and I have that rolling, it's riding in this still. Um, boring chapstick, no one cares. We have pocket crucifix or pocket rosary in here from my friend Cole that has not come out of my pocket at all. Log and jotter notebook. Uh, I use this a lot because if I'm not in the garage and somebody on Instagram or something uh, 
puts an order in for a slip, I'll write it down in, in here so that I don't forget. And then when I um, get down to the shop, I transfer into the actual book. <laughs> Look at the nice stains on there, geez. Um, I think that's from pizza. <laughs> so these are still in the pocket used all day. Um, and then we just have the issuing stitches, Hank, that has not changed and the fail safe goods wallet. This is the smash and grab. Haven't changed that at all. This has just absolutely taken a beautiful patina. Look at that nice minimalist wallet. Love this. And I think that's everything that's been in my pockets lately. Um, not, not even close to ready to make wallets or really anything else yet. I just started a couple days ago, you know what I'm saying? Like I, there's, there's no way that I can do something like this yet. I am not even close. I can't even make a wallet yet. I'm not that good. Um, I'm trying to kind of dial in the, the sheaths first and then slowly move up from there. But um, these are, these are fun to make. So really enjoying that. I do have another stamp on the way that says Slater Leatherworks on it, so that'll be cool, but let me uh, show you guys real quick. This is kind of the setup, and it only goes this far, or that far, but this is where I hang out for 10 hours a day now, basically. So uh, I got a couple of mats. These are all carrots that I'm working on, regular sized carrots, and then carrot XLs, these are pretty cool because these um, can fit a, where are you? Where'd you go? Here we go. The, the XLs will fit a number of things, so they can fit the Nipex. Absolutely. But you can also kind of fit something else in there with it too, like a, like a pen. Or you can do a Swiss Army knife and a pen. It's three inches by four inches three by four. So these are pretty cool. This is definitely something that you can put a couple of items in, in your pocket. Uh, so that's nice. But yeah, I've got a couple of the large ones going and then some of the normal size ones. These are two inches by four inches. So just your standard slip size and everything is made in the USA. The, the whole thing, the leather, the thread, Every aspect of this is USA. Um, well, I don't know about the contact cement that I use, but who knows about this? Jesus. But other than that, everything is everything is made in the USA. It's actually from Buckle Guy. They're right next door to me. They're in Massachusetts, so everything gets here in like a day or two after I place the order. That's awesome. But yeah, everything's done by hand here on this little tiny bench. Um, and I'm not only working with orange leather, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff. This is some beautiful stuff. So this is called Horween Chrome XL Dark Olive. This is some beautiful stuff. So I'm gonna be making a whole bunch of slips. These are ready to be stamped. I've already edged them. I've got a couple of larger pieces and then the typical small ones, but I'll be working with that this weekend. This stuff is really beautiful. As you move the leather, it turns into a beautiful olive color. So that'll be a lot of fun. And then I have a number of other leathers on the way. And I've got some crazy horse. Uh, check this out. This is crazy horse Mustang Brown. That's gonna be really cool to work with. This stuff is gorgeous too. Beautiful patina that will take but um yeah that's what I've been up to like I said don't know if this is actually going to go anywhere um I'm not really sure if I can make like a living off of this uh but for right now it'll do and I it felt good to just finally get out of the place that I was at and uh not lose myself morally for money I was tempted that money was tempting but morally, I cannot do fuck shit. So, leather, here we go. But guys, um, 
I hope that you enjoyed that little update and uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. So we're back to, back to kind of the old school stuff, working with our hands and really testing products. I'm hoping I can do more content now on the channel uh, since I don't work such weird hours. I was working the weirdest hours ever at the other job. That was the other thing. I had no life. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you guys for sticking along. Um, for anyone that ends up putting an order in for a carrot or something else, thank you for the support. Uh, Richter, thank you for teaching me how to do this. Doggone Motown, thank you. Uh, Steve, Pine Tree EDC, huge supporter. And um, Nikki has been my biggest cheerleader with this, so that really helps but we'll see what happens anyway guys um i'll see you guys soon next video will probably be the review of the slater go check out dusty at duckhead forge absolutely phenomenal work just look at that uh the ones that he's dropping are going to be so cool nice and grippy blasted my carta also, uh, Scrawny Lumberjack has vultures in M4 with vintage micarta and orange liners dropping. I want to say the 26th or the 29th, so check out his page as well. I'll link him down below. Everyone's just pumping out crazy cool stuff. Um, but that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you for everything. I love you guys all so much. Go use your shit. Learn how to sharpen your knives. And I will see you guys on the next video. I love you so much, fam. Take care.